is a hopeless jumble and the raindrops tumble all around heaven opens a magic lane when all the clouds darken up the skyway there's a rainbow highway to be found leading from your window pane to a place behind the sun just a step behind Happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow. Why, oh why, can't I? Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the light of the next day, the first day of the week, crept over Palestine, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb to keep vigil. Earlier, there had been an earthquake. A messenger of the Lord had come down from heaven and had gone to the grave. He rolled away the stone and sat down on top of it. He veritably glowed. He was vibrating with light. His clothes were light, white like transfiguration, like fresh snow. The soldiers guarding the tomb were terrified. They froze like stone. The messenger spoke to the women, to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. He said to them, don't be afraid. I know you are here keeping watch for Jesus who was crucified. But Jesus is not here. He was raised, just as he said he would be. Come over to the grave and see for yourself. And then go straight to his disciples and tell them he's been raised from the dead and has gone on to Galilee. 
you'll find him there. Listen carefully to what I'm telling you. The women were both terrified and thrilled, and they quickly left the tomb and went to find the disciples and give them this outstandingly good news. But while they were on their way, they saw Jesus himself, and Jesus greeted them. Rejoice! The women fell down before him, kissing his feet and worshiping him. And he said, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. Tell them I will meet them there.
Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to our Easter Sunday service. It is the most important day of the Christian calendar, Resurrection Day, the risen Christ among us. And even though you're at home and we're here, we know that we are together because the Jesus who rose is among us and in us and through us. I want to remind you that we are doing social distancing. So during this service today, we all will keep our six feet distance. We have Barry and Makar and Dave on the technology, and uh, Tanya, Christian, Peggy, and I will be leading music today. So I invite you in the space you are in, whether you are with family or alone. We know that we are here together as McDougal United Church. We'll sing together our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. of you with really astute ears you heard a bass line too and Barry singing from the back multitasker that he is we all have different gifts to give we all have different struggles that we go through and some of you are being great you're in your home and you're social distancing and you got lots of things that you're up to puzzles maybe a 10,000 piece that you've been meaning to get to others of you are slogging it out still going to work and some of you 
just feel like you want this all to be over. Perhaps all of us do. That I can share with you. Different spaces, different people, diversity that is so rich and wonderful, and yet we are one. We come to this place remembering that Jesus rose among us. And so I invite you to pray with me. I will do the red and you can do the black at home. All the world is a hopeless jumble. And yet we have seen resurrection. The stone has rolled away. The tomb is empty. Sometimes we miss the glimmers. We fear the darkness has overcome the light. We want to stay safe, afraid to step out. Then we remember the women who braved the chill of early morning to prepare Jesus' body. Though Though they they were grieving, grieving, they they stepped stepped out in faith. faith. The The first first light light brought brought a new day day of of hope and and healing. May we step into resurrection light and embrace the hope of a new day where God transforms our fear with love. Hear Hear our our prayers of praise and and thanksgiving. So I invite you just to breathe in. Pause. Center yourself. And feel the love that surrounds you. God of all. Resurrection Day. Joyful Easter tide. And yet we are surrounded by sickness and death. And we're afraid. May this space of resurrection resonate in our lives. May we know that the risen Christ is among us and in us. Carrying us through this time as we live into that first light of dawn, resurrection light. Amen. So we know it's not easy being in this space and in this time, and it's so easy to give up or at least despair. But know this. You are loved, and you are forgiven. Resurrection embraces you. Thanks be to God for this amazing gift. Amen. This is the time in our service where we first pass the peace. So important when we are taking communion. And that reminds me, a little later in the service, we will have communion. And you are at home. Find some bread and some juice. Have it ready there with you. Because even though you are not here in this place, God is with you. And your communion with remembrance is a sacred act. So we pass the peace this way now. The peace of Christ be with you and out to our friends. So... I invite everyone who's here to pass the peace. Peace of Christ be with you and And also also with you. you. The peace of Christ be with you and And also also with you. The peace of Christ be with you and and also also with with you. you. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. This is the time where we usually have an offering. Of course, you're not here to put your bills and coins in the plate. So there are three ways that we have to give. Now, you see them on the screen. First one, you can text GIVE to 855-338-0678. You can do an interact transfer through your bank by including McDougal United Church. 
Um, the email is office at mcduniteducom or you can go to our website, www.mcduniteducom and select Give from the main menu. Scroll down to Donate Online. Our work at McDougall continues even as our building is closed. We are here at the um, Acadia Spins Around Food Bank is still running through the church. We have Zoom meetings going on. There's so many ways we are trying to connect with our community and with you, our congregation. Thank you for your gifts. We're going to sing together. Now the, gr now the green blade rises. Love has come again, like wheat arising green. Jesus Christ is risen. So we light our candle and remember Christ is among us. Let's see if I can get this. I can't see it. There. So thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your dedication to this community. Thank you that you remain with us even though you're not here. And may all the gifts that are given to this church, McDougall United Church, transform a world so that we can live closer to that moment of resurrection where peace prevails. Amen. It's a cute video I saw on uh, the internet. A very special Easter. <laughs> what do you like about Easter? Celebrate with your family. Easter hunting for eggs. You get to open them and there's stuff in there. Money and grass. Lots of candy. What does the Easter bunny do? Hops. He hides the eggs. He's a person that's dressed up in a costume. Who is Jesus? Jesus is like a person God. He is God's son. What does Jesus look like? Long brown hair and a brown beard. And he's got like a robe on. He has this belt, like what karate people wear, I think. Who are the disciples? Twelve chosen followers of Jesus. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, and Valkyrie, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, Bartholomew. They're the good guys. What did Jesus teach? How to pray and that God's real. To always love one another when it's hard. 
teaching them about Christmas and Valentine's Day. What kinds of miracles did Jesus do? He turned water into wine. He made five loaves and two fishes spread a long way. He helped people if they were sick. He walked on water. There was a storm and it was all windy and they said, Jesus, Jesus, and then he calmed it down so, so they won't be scared. What would be a really cool miracle for him to do? For him to be a superhero like Batman. Let me ride a shark. Fix the government. What did they eat at the Last Supper? Bread and like some dipping sauce. Chicken nuggets and french fries. And there's the juice. Some vegetables with chocolate on it. Why did some people not like Jesus? That everybody was calling him king. They didn't believe that he was God's son. They thought he would only hang out with the people who had done no sin, but he helped the sinners because they're the ones who needed help. What did those people do to Jesus? There were swords trying to capture him, whipped him, and put a crown of thorns on his head, and made him carry the cross a long way. Put him on a cross and stab him. They hurted his heart. He died on Good Friday. And then somebody put him in a tube that had this big rock over it. What happened on Sunday morning? He grew from the ground. He rose from the dead. What did the disciples do when they saw Jesus? Very afraid, thought he was a ghost. They saw the scars, they touched him. Jesus, Jesus is alive, and my love him. They were so happy. How do we follow Jesus? Confess our sins. We ask him into our heart by praying. And then he's like in our heart. <laughs> Why did Jesus do all of this? It was all for us because he loves us. He said, I don't want them to be scared. And whenever they're hurt, I want to help. Jesus. I hope you enjoyed that. There are so many points of joy that go with this Easter celebration, and I hope somehow you are able to share in it. Maybe you're Zooming or Skyping with friends and family. Maybe you're cooking yourself the great turkey dinner or the ham dinner just so that you can enjoy it. Easter is a time of celebration, so take a moment and celebrate. We're going to sing another hymn. This is written by Linnea Good, one of the United Church's great hymn writers. Hey now, sing in hallelujah. at the rising sun Jesus loved people and he made them friends Hey, now the tomb was empty He called to the children and the women and men Hey, now the tomb was empty Hey, now singing hallelujah Hey, now at the rising sun. Jesus heals people and he helped them be well. Hey, now the tomb is empty. He taught about God in the stories he'd tell. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now singing hallelujah. And they said he was a king Hey, now the tomb was empty He turned all the tables on everything Hey, now the tomb was empty Hey, now singing hallelujah Hey, now the morning has come Hey, now singing hallelujah The tomb was empty at the rising sun
Jesus had power and they took him away. Hey, now the tomb was empty. He nailed him to a cross and they killed him one day. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now singing hallelujah. Hey, now the morning has come. Hey, now singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising sun. Jesus loves people and he lives again. Hey, now the tomb was empty. They call us disciples and he calls us his friends. Hey, now the tomb was empty. Hey, now singing hallelujah. Hey, now the morning has come. Hey, now singing hallelujah. The tomb was empty at the rising It's Easter Sunday today, and for Christians, it is undoubtedly the most important holy day. On Easter Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, who was the anointed one. Easter is the day that God brings life from death, where grief is met with joy, where denials are met with forgiveness. Easter turns the world on its head and says, you my beloved, have not been duped. You have not followed Jesus these past years just to slink away into obscurity. You've not followed a teacher who has been defeated. You, beloved, are in the presence of resurrection and your fears and doubts and grief and betrayals are washed away by a risen Christ. And now... Now you can truly become what God intended you to be. You can bring heaven to earth, just as Jesus said. But this awareness of God breaking through didn't happen in an instant. Transformation such as this rarely does. Because change begins in those spaces of doubt and grief and fear and denial, and they are powerful foes. And resurrection is not so much a burst of light as it is a dawning. It begins at first light with just an inkling, just a wisp of hope. We see that in all the gospel stories. Each of the writers has a different twist on the same story but they all begin with some women who go to the tomb at dawn. They go for different reasons, but they are the ones to receive the first light of resurrection, the first inkling that change is coming. And so in Mark, which is the first written of the Gospels, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome are the ones who attend at the grave. And they're bringing spices to anoint the body of Jesus. And they're concerned with who will roll the stone away. That's what they're saying as they're walking. And when they arrive, they see this young man, and he's dressed in a white robe. And he tells them, don't be afraid. Jesus has been raised. Go tell Peter and the disciples that Jesus will be in Galilee, and he will meet you there where it all began. The earliest manuscripts of the Gospel of Mark end with the women fleeing from the tomb in terror and amazement, saying nothing, it says, because of their fear. The first light of resurrection in Mark is met with fear, which kind of makes sense. Because as much as we say, just release your fear and step into new life, it's just not that easy. It's a process that begins with a glimmer. Then the Gospel of Luke has the women who have followed Jesus from Galilee, it says. Only Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, are mentioned in the text, but it's clear there are other women who are there too. And these women were the ones who had stayed at the crucifixion watching from afar. They were the last to see Jesus. They had followed him to the tomb where he was laid, and they knew that's where they were, where Jesus was. So they went home to prepare spices, and of course the Sabbath happened so they couldn't go out. And here they are at first light on Sunday morning. 
They return again. And like the gospel written by Mark, they see that the stone has been rolled away and there is no body. And they're perplexed at this. But in this story, two men appear to them in dazzling clothes and they're terrified and fall to the ground. But these messengers of God ask them this question. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember what he said? Resurrection might begin with fear, but it moves to remembrance, and it happens at first light. And in the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb alone. There's no mention of spices to prepare a body in this story. She probably comes just to remember. She and Peter are the only constants in all the resurrection stories. So it's clear that she has a very deep connection to Jesus. And again, when she arrives at the tomb to remember in her grief, she finds the stone rolled away and she runs back to tell Peter and the disciple who Jesus loved and cries, they've taken our Lord away and I don't know where to find them. And after Peter and the other disciples see this empty grave, the text says they believed. But it doesn't say what they believed, only that they had yet to understand that Jesus must rise from the dead. And then they leave. And John's story returns to Mary, who stands weeping. Her grief is so great, she can't leave. She doesn't seem to be afraid, she's just lost. But then she looks into the tomb again, and there are two angels, it says, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. And then she turns around, and she sees Jesus, but she doesn't know that it's him. And he asks her, why are you weeping? And she thinks he's the gardener, and she kind of accuses him. If you've carried him away, sir, please tell me where you've laid him. I will take care of his body. And then the man says, Mary. And suddenly... She sees that he is there. She recognizes him, and she calls him teacher. And she runs to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. At first light, fear moves to remembrance. And remembrance moves to recognition. Matthew's resurrection story is the one we read before the service began. Again, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary go to see the tomb. This time again, there's no spices. It's as if they go to see if all that Jesus told them was true. Matthew really digs into this supernatural aspect of resurrection. There's no young man or two men or two angels, as the other three Gospels gently tell the story. Instead, they find themselves in the midst of an earthquake. And an angel of God just descends from heaven and comes and rolls back the stone and sits on it. His appearance, the text says, is like lightning. And their clothing is as white as snow. And there are guards in this story in the right place at the wrong time. Just as Jesus, as the angel is descending, they shake with fear and they become like the dead. And the angel says to the women, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, but he's not here. He's been raised. Come, see the place where he lay. And then go to tell the disciples that he's going ahead of them into Galilee where you'll see them. So, they leave the tomb with fear and great joy, and they run to tell the disciples, and suddenly Jesus appears before them and says, Hi! And the text says they run to him and they take hold of his feet. And one of the commentators explaining why taking hold of their feet is so important, because apparently all the stories of ghosts from around the world show people with no feet. So in taking hold of their feet, they are assured that this isn't a ghost sighting. Jesus is really there. He has a body. It's a resurrected body. It's not bent over in pain like the last time they saw him or lashed or any of those things. It is a new resurrected body. First light starts with fear. It moves to remembrance. It opens with recognition and it crescendos into joy, complete with undeniable signs of God breaking through, making it clear that resurrection will change 
everything. And this is the dance of first light. This is the dawning that brings us hope. This is the real story of resurrection. Jesus is risen in us as well. We, the body of Christ, are the sign that God is transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary. We live as Christ in the world, and that is truly Easter, re Easter resurrection. And we need resurrection now more than ever. In this time of pandemic isolation where sickness and death is all we talk about. It's on the minds of every person in the world, it seems. In this time, we need us some resurrection. Some life in the face of death. A transformation of a world that is subject to darkness by first light. And if we look closely, it's everywhere. And here are just a few. The sowers have become essential workers. Gail is a friend of mine. She's made many of the costumes that we borrow for our shows. She has restored fabrics at the High River Museum that were destroyed after the flood. But now she's put her talents to the cause. Here are pictures from her Facebook page. This is what she says. Finishing making 13 scrub gowns for the Calgary Drop-In Center. Thanks to Rib Tour for giving me 20 khaki sheets for free that I could transform into these gowns. And beside those are pictures of face masks she's making for friends and family and others. Jesus is not dead. First light brings signs of resurrection. This is a picture of a server at Trucker's. Cord, a long-haul truck driver, was passing through Redcliffe, which is near Medicine Hat, when he saw someone coming out of the truck stop with a takeout bag. So the story on CBC says he was two weeks into a particularly punishing haul. Coffee, showers, and hot meals had become scarce for truck drivers. At this point, Cord had eaten only sandwiches for two weeks. When he asked this uh, man, they said, oh, we'll be happy to cook you a hot meal. And when they confirmed that he was a trucker, they told him it was free. You see, about three weeks ago, someone gave a donation of $100 to provide hot meals for truckers. And when the owners thanked him on Facebook, others in the community responded in kind, and they have raised more than $1,000. And every trucker who stops in gets a hot meal for free. The community sees long-haul trucking as an essential service, and they want to help. Jesus is not dead. First light brings signs of resurrection. This is Dr. Nadia Alam, a physician in Ontario. She's responsible for fitting ventilators for patients who are struggling with breathing from COVID-19. As she was explaining the procedure to one of the patients, someone who was already struggling with COPD, a breathing disorder, he declined her assistance. He said, if I'm going to die, I want to see the sky and talk with my family. Later, she wrote on her Twitter feed, I'm starving, thirsty, tired. I wore my N95 mask for seven hours straight, careful to conserve my PPE. And then I go see a 72-year-old man with poor lung function and COVID-19 who's on oxygen. I don't want to die on the machine. I want to see the blue sky. So I sat and we watched the sky. Jesus is not dead. First light brings signs of resurrection. This is a picture of a friend of mine named Leslie. She's a minister. We went to school together at AST. And over the past several weeks, my Facebook feed has displayed ministers from across the country finding new ways to be the church in the midst of this pandemic. I mean, it's really hard because church starts with this idea that where two or three gather together in Jesus' name, that Jesus is present there. And so how do we gather two or three in a safe way? So many of my minister friends are 
messages through Facebook Live trying to keep services going. We here are taping our services from week to week and we've started using Zoom to make connections. But Leslie found a way to be more present. She holds prayer for people outside her window. They walk or drive by. They have a conversation from the sidewalk to the window and she says a prayer for them. Simple, but so moving. Jesus is not dead. First light brings signs of resurrection. On Good Friday, I watched a live stream service from St. Peter's in Cochrane. My brother-in-law is a retired Lutheran minister and my sister Elaine, his wife, they go there. So they called my brother, Kendall, their daughter, Christy, and their daughter-in-law, Sarah, to come and do a tenebrae service, much like we do, six feet apart. It's a small congregation, and live streaming is new to them. They don't have the recording opportunities that we do even. But as they went through the service, much like our Good Friday service, the music was heartfelt, the reflections were honest, the whole thing was a gift of love. It wasn't slick or fancy, but God was in the midst. And I was reminded of a post from my preaching professor, who is now a minister in Toronto. And he was struggling with this live streaming and how to keep his congregation together. And so he posted this phrase because he was discouraged, as I have been, as are all our friends who are ministers and struggling. And this is what the post says. Hey, church people, faithfully streaming low-budget, shaky, amateur daily prayer or Sunday service from your messy house because you want to serve your church community and offer what you can to God in love? That's your perfume poured over Jesus' feet. It's beautiful. Keep going. And then later he says, try not to worry or be distracted by the big budget production down the road. Jesus loves what you offer with love and obedience. I love that line. That's your perfume poured over Jesus' feet. It's beautiful. Keep going. Jesus is not dead. First light brings signs of resurrection. And so we move from fear to remembrance, to recognition, to hope and joy. And we might still be in the fear space. We're just barely able to remember that Jesus promised to be with us. But we can recognize the risen Christ breaking through into this world of death and disease. And joy is being kindled everywhere. It is the first light of risen Christ. And with it, we become the resurrection. Amen. This is a song called The Prayer. I pray you'll be our Watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer when we lose our. with your grace to a place where we'll be safe I pray you find your light 
and hold it in your hearts. Arikada chike. When stars go out each night. Etana stena se. Nella mia preghiera. Let this be your prayer. Quanta fede te. So now, we're moving to that time of communion. So I invite you, go get your bread and your juice or your water or your wine you can have in your at home. And we come together and celebrate communion. And as we do when we are here in the sanctuary, we say our creed together. So I invite you to follow along. We are not, not alone. alone. We, we live, live in God's world. world. We, we believe, believe in God, God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live, to live with, with respect, respect in creation, creation to, to love and serve others, others to, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And so we begin our communion serv service, the great thanksgiving. This service is based on um, a song of faith, which is the most recent creed of the United Church of Canada. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up, up to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Holy mystery. That is holy love. You are beyond complete knowledge, above perfect description, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Source of life, living word, and bond of love. You are creative and self-giving, generously moving in all the near and distant corners of the universe. Nothing exists that does not find its source in you. Through fear-filled days and aching nights, when the powers of death have done their worst, your love has never deserted us. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transform us. We praise you for Jesus Christ, risen to life, eternal as your love. With the women at the tomb, we raise the strain of gladness. Hallelujah. Life is stronger than death. The day of resurrection has come scattering fear and gloom. And so we rejoice with all your people of every time and place and with the angels and the archangels to proclaim the glory of your name as we sing together, Holy, Holy. Jesus, God incarnate, the risen Christ, who joins us together as a community of brave yet hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and place. In this meal, we move from fear to remembrance. We remember Jesus, his promises, and the price he paid for who he was, what he said, and what he did. On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and said, Take and eat. Whenever you do this, remember me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, and he poured it, and he said, this is the new covenant, remember we. And so we do remember. We remember his life of love, his friendships, his teaching, his dying, and his rising to life again. And in sharing this meal together, we live out the mystery of our faith, and we sing this acclamation. mystery, God the Spirit. We call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these simple elements in community, we may taste and see your goodness through Christ in Christ and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. And so we break the bread and pour the cup. So here, the body of Christ, the bread of life, the life bud of Christ, the cup of blessing. There are many in this community who are struggling. We are in touch with people by telephone, some having difficulty coping with the isolation, many who are in seniors' residences further isolated as they try to save, stay safe. And so we remember those. We pray that in this world, where it is uncertain what will come next or how long this will go on, that we would find peace, that we would still seek justice, and that hope would be before us. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now I want, uh, we'll sing together the Amen. I'm going to step away from the table and I'm going to let Peggy come first and take one of the juice and then Christian, if you'd like to come. And we're going to do this with you at home one more time. So take your bread and I'll say the red and you say the black. The body of Christ, the bread, the bread of, of life. life. And then take your cup. The life blood of Christ. The, the cup, cup of, of blessing. blessing. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So just take a snap of bread. And drink your cup. And remember. This is a song, how beautiful. <laughs>
And so we pray together. Thank you, O oh Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live your way and share your joy. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed. Forgive as we have been forgiven. Love as, as we, we have, have been loved. loved. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. So this concludes our Easter service. And our prayer is that wherever you are, God has broken through and made the ordinary extraordinary, that resurrection life is with you. And so I invite you to sing with us our final hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Awake my soul. 
And even though you might be at home, resurrection light is streaming through. So go into your space, into your life, and remember you are the risen Christ in the world. That is an awesome responsibility, but it is also a great gift. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all. Amen. Thank you.